part two. Um, uh, my fingers got all infected. I had to go to the hospital and get my fingers lanced and all this pus came out. I couldn't pick anything up using my fingers for weeks. Uh, as like I said, we were covered in sores. Oh, the other thing is that we had constantly foam in our mouths, white white mouth foam we called it and, and it seemed like it was percolating like it was alive um there were tiny tiny insects they looked round like a barnacle would attach to your teeth and you couldn't even scrape them off with a knife they were so attached and they would walk around and, man there was a time I would be looking and, and and every little hair on every eyelash had little tiny bugs on the ends and all of my mustache and my beard and my hair and we would be covered in bugs, little all kinds of bugs, bugs that I can't even find in any book from head to toe and these things would be biting and shoot, I mean, in our anus, in our ears, in our nose, in our mouth, in our eyes, constantly squirming and biting and laying eggs, having worms come out of your skin. Morgellons is a horrific experience. Um, it is my belief that Morgellons, excuse me, is actually uh, connected to chemtrails. Chemtrails, whatever it is they're spraying, this barium, aluminum, titanium, uh, mixture. People have also found uh, DNA, human DNA, viral DNA, some other strange things like that in it. It is my belief that it is a nanoscale, nanotechnology, uh, biocompatible, embeddable, possibly organic, maybe not organic, uh, microchips. Uh, we know from our... our, our and, and I've said this before, carbon microtubules. They can be a semiconductor, a conductor, an insulator, and a superconductor. So right there with that one material, you'll have everything you need to build a little tiny transceiver, transmitter. And if it was embedded in your skin or in your bloodstream and it self-replicated, self-assembled using the elements from your body, it could travel through your bloodstream and it could lock on to all the little neurons and nerve cells and, you know, possibly it works some way where they're using uh, microwave radiation, terahertz radiation possibly to vibrate them, sort of like radar reflects off of chaff. Um, uh, it is my belief that these these chemtrail chemicals that they sprayed into our room and the insect infestation were somehow related. Um, we were thoroughly, thoroughly infested with insects. The strangest thing of all, and um, I, I haven't heard this from any other targeted individuals yet, is that we had stuff shooting out of the tops of our heads uh, small round grayish seashell looking uh, spongy kind of material and it would I, I thought it was a trick okay I was like it's got to be coming from my clothes and I'm taking my clothes apart literally like looking excuse me looking for the the, the shooters you know the shooting this stuff I can't find it so I would sit there with a video camera, you know, I, I would sit there and, 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 and record myself for, for a long time, you know, and looking around too, trying to see are they shooting it at me, and then it, it no, this was literally coming off of the tops of our heads, it would go and grow in the air as it went up, and as it came down, it would begin to change color, and when it landed, it would change color to match the surrounding area that it landed on so it was almost hard to find these little things in the street um, but they were there and they would shoot off uh, you know every three four five seven minutes one would go pew, pew. and I noticed uh, over the course of, of the two weeks or so when this occurred is that we, these things were everywhere they were like by the laundromat where we stood smoking a cigarette while we did our clothes um, on the pathway between our home and the doctor we went to see every day, uh, in our room, in the bathroom where we lived. I mean, these things were everywhere. Uh, nobody seemed to notice. 
There was only one time, I think, when some friends of ours said, hey, you have things shooting off the tops of your heads, and then they sort of went away. Um, you'd think that, that uh, walking around with stuff shooting off the tops of your heads, and we did ask a couple people, and they said, yes, you have things shooting off the tops of your head. I looked at the video. It was... Uh, the video was stolen. They broke into the room, they put water into the back of the phone, and they took the little video card out of the, the phone. So, before I learned how to put it up on Facebook or anything, this is when it first started, uh, the video of that was gone. Um, it seemed as though we had all these people following us around. Like, you know, we'd go into Starbucks, and Starbucks would fill with these people, and there'd be people, like, sitting there taking notes about everything we did and said, and... and um, I don't know. It, it, it was clear that there was a, a large number of people involved in this operation. Uh, it seemed as though they were able to go into any building. I mean, I watched them one time walk into a, a, a store that sold bread and stuff. I, I went in to go ask if they could spare any to eat and these two guys from the street who were following us walked in like after we did went behind the counter uh, the people who worked there moved out of the way and uh, they said may I help you and um, um, they gave us some bread but you know like the ability to walk into any store and go behind the counter and push the employees out of the way I mean who, who can do that who can do that? Only somebody with, I don't know, Homeland Security? Something like that. Anyway, uh, as far as the gang stalking people, there were several different types of people following us. Uh, there were the, the FBI types, the military types, the well-dressed, clean-cut, you know, you look like they looked like they had done operations, they knew what they were doing, and there were that, those types. There were the, the people that looked like doctors or scientists. And there were people that looked like, like college kids. Like they hired a bunch of college kids. Like they put an ad in the voice that said, you know, come out gang stalking, follow a crazy guy who we've dosed with drugs around and win a prize if you get him to go insane. I mean, literally, uh, there was one time these people were following me, following me everywhere. I'm trying to get away from them. They won't. So I finally just sit down on the stairs and I say, you know what? Screw you people, I'm gonna eat these gummy bears, and you can do whatever the hell you want. And, and these three guys over on this side, they said, oh, he's not doing anything. Screw this, we're going home, this is no fun. So, you know, I don't know, it seemed like they, they hired kids. They were like school kids, girls, they were like, we're gonna eat your entrails. You know, and they would follow me around, and one time they said, we frightened him, and everybody cheered. They were all so excited. Uh, there was one time, I mean, frequently, this is what would happen. They would dose me out, and I would wander around the city, like, trying to find solace, a place to sit down. Because every time I would sit down, I would have bugs shooting off of me or onto me or something. I don't know, maybe they were just zapping me with some kind of particle beam weapon or something. But I couldn't find any place to sit and, you know, catch my breath, get a moment. Uh, so I would just walk, walk, walk for miles, for miles, walk uptown, downtown, cross town, back uptown, downtown, cross town. Finally, uh, I sat down at this bank and I would spray alcohol. I had 98% rubbing alcohol, isopropyl alcohol. I would spray everything, spray myself, spray my where I was sitting, because I had these bugs jumping all over me. And I sat down and they say, what is he doing? Is, is he paranoid? I guess they didn't tell the people who were following us about the bugs. Um, and then they, they said, go inside already, go inside. I guess they were sick of following me around. Um, uh, 